Good morning. COVID actually redefined the status quo of the world, right? It's never going to be the same again. But we've always looked at it from the perspective of the disease and how it affected all of us. I'm going to talk to you a different story today. Gone are the days when innovation was either serendipitous or done at a leisurely pace. Those romantic versions of a falling apple or lack of bacterial growth in a petri dish are things of the past. Today, innovation is on demand and done at scale and pace. And the world saw an outstanding example of that during the recent pandemic. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. That nothing but effective vaccines could halt the spread, prevent complications, and hopefully prevent deaths was very well understood. But history was against us. Average time taken for a vaccine to be developed and commercialized from the time a disease is identified for the first time traditionally has been 13 to 15 years. We didn't have that luxury. The first uh, need when you are trying to develop a vaccine is to understand the pathogen that's causing the disease. It means understanding its genetic makeup, its structure, the map of proteins on its surface, methods of its causing the disease, and modes of tra its transmission. Because without understanding any of these, you can begin to understand the disease, understand the pathogen, and hopefully find something that can stop it. Traditionally, all of this would begin with isolating the pathogen from the infected people, studying it over a period of time, and in good time, this information would be available having gone through a very robust peer review process before it gets published, and then vaccine and diagnostic and therapeutic development will start taking place. Vaccine development in itself is a tedious process, much longer than one would, uh, one has come to accept for therapeutic products or medicines as we call them. There's a fundamental difference. Therapeutic products, medicines, are given for treating pre-existing disease. Whereas vaccines go into healthy people, mostly given to children, all to vulnerable populations. Which means, understandably, the bar for safety and long-term impact is set much higher. The reviews are sequential in nature. So before a vaccine actually goes through the whole development cycle, each time you must finish a full step, go to the reviewers, they review, you come back, and then you begin the next process. Now all of this lengthens the time taken by a vaccine to come to market. But even if a product has already been developed and approved in the country of origin, the challenge doesn't stop there. Regulatory systems around the world are neither harmonized nor are at the same level of capacity and capability. In a paper that my group published in 2018 in vaccines, a uh, high impact peer reviewed journal, much respected in the vaccine field, we demonstrated for the first time that qualitatively and quantitatively the difference in terms of the information sought by country regulators could be as high as 77 to 79%, which means only about 20% of what you submitted in your country of origin would be accepted in the form it is. And the rest 80% would either have to be partly redone or reframed. All of this increases time to access. Now, all of this meant that after a vaccine is approved in its country of origin, its availability in another country could take as long as five years. Vaccine manufacturing also tends to lag the vaccine development cycle because it's capital intensive. Most vaccine plants are product specific and that, that calls for a huge capital investment which is a risk, a business risk and companies therefore would begin to establish capacities 
as the vaccine nears approval which means another couple of years before you could actually produce at scale the reason why I've, i am providing all this context is for you to understand that when the world had a covid vaccine in less than a year's time it is not just the development or the science that had to change even after a vaccine has been manufactured even if after, after it is being distributed the infrastructure to actually reach the populations that it is intended to reach is another challenge remember that globally our efforts have always focused on vaccine for children and this is the largest adult vaccination drive in the world in the history of mankind and above all there is the question of affordability and access a vaccine may not be affordable for public at large or for countries you have countries that have very very low per capita income to very high per capita income but the problem is global and if you have solved all of this you must still fight the issue of hesitancy people don't like to get vaccinated novak yokovic is a famous example isn't he this context should now help you better appreciate what all happened in the world if you recall 25th of december 2019 was the first established case of covid the reason why the disease was called covid 19 although most of us got affected by it in 2020 and as early as january 2020 that's within weeks the entire genetic structure had not only been mapped but had also been published scientists from across the world different different countries different geographies different continents even came together formed consortia and started isolating pathogens from different individuals who were affected and kept publishing those genetic sequences now this helped in understanding how the disease is spreading what strain of the virus is dominant what strain is causing more disease what strain is getting transmitted faster what is causing more hospitalizations what is causing more deaths and all of this led to a much faster development of the vaccine at least the process began much sooner now rem- remember january 2020 is for the first time the the pathogen the genetic structure is identified and at the end of the year you already have vaccines getting rolled out so you've done this in a matter of less than a year while many companies and developers used traditional methods like live attenuated vaccines or virus vectored vaccines the ones that we saw in india many of them many took novel approaches mrna vaccines were developed in the western world my own company zydus we developed a plasmid dna based vaccine for the first time in the world for human use these technologies are rapidly scalable they are modular they allow for immediate adaptation to newer strains which meant that you could change your vaccine as the virus changed itself but the challenge doesn't end here as i mentioned regulatory cycles are long two things happened one the global publishing community ensured that information was being made public as it was being made available and regulators around the world made sure that we had an opportunity to do rolling submissions which meant products as the information made available we could strengthen our dossiers all of this helped making the vaccines available fast indian government did a fantastic job here in terms of rolling out i mean a billion plus people being vaccinated twice during the year at the cost of the exchequer is an outstanding feat by any means but and globally there was covax that was set up which was adequately funded but failed to achieve its intended consequence which was making sure access was available to everyone although we have tackled the covid problem effectively questions still remain one are we prepared for the next pandemic two while the pathogen doesn't distinguish do we 
should access be limited by geography skin of color of the skin or their economic status and what about ethics the vaccine mandates are they ethical i'd like to thank you for your time today and would like you to ponder over these questions because for sure there is another pandemic coming whether in our lifetime or in our children's thank you so much